all won there. And the New American has an article about his win and about his perception of what it's going to take to win. The day after he won the CPAC straw poll, he said, a clear focus of the issue of privacy in the midst of America's growing surveillance state is necessary if the Republican Party is going to grow and win elections again. Paul said, it's a message that can grow the party, and the party's got to grow bigger, or we're not going to win again. Well, this is not simply about GOP survival. This is about the survival of America as a democracy instead of descending into tyranny. And he understands that. Look at the bottom of this article. He says, it may sound like I'm calling for the election of Republicans, but I'm not. I'm calling for the election of lovers of liberty, and he's heading to Berkeley, California, to talk to people there about privacy. See, this is not a left-right issue. This affects everyone. It's an issue of liberty versus tyranny, and that's something that's going to draw people from both parties. Now, we had an article today on InfoWars. You know who else collected metadata? The Stasi. Look at this article here. Now, they may have done it in a very crude, ad hoc way, kind of messy post-its, but look at how similar these kinds of graphs that they are drawing to. They were trying to follow one particular guy who is a poet and a journalist, and they didn't like his opinions. Well, guess who else does that? Our government does that. Look at the way they do it, though. They've got nice, shiny, neat slides that they create where they look at, for instance, WikiLeaks as an organization. Looks very similar to that other one, doesn't it? They draw their organization lines out, their metadata. They see what the relationships are. Then they focus in on one person. As we see, they focused in on Glenn Greenwald in this next slide here. Then we see that they can map the relationships to a whole lot of people. That's what they're doing. That's what metadata is about. It's about doing the same thing the Stasi did. And then look at this last slide here. There's your difference. Down at the bottom, you see this was all put together by three corporations. And they're pitching this, pimping themselves out to the military industrial complex for a defense contract. That's the fundamental difference. Instead of it just being simply run by the government communists, it's being run by this corporate fascist militaristic synthesis of these two of the government and these big corporations. But it's not just that. Look at what's happening in the UK. We've got doctors there doing exactly what they did in East Germany, what the Stasi got everybody to do there. They're turning Britain, Britain's doctors, into snitches. As Paul Joseph Watson pointed out, doctors are being forced to become state snitches in order to spot, quote unquote, radical patients. That's exactly what the Stasi did when they made East Germany a nation of informants. He points out, Doctors in Britain are being forced to become state snitches and spot radical patients under a National Health Service initiative that threatens to cut funding if a GP practice fails to take part in the program. They're being trained to detect patients who are, quote, vulnerable to radical radicalization and then notify the authorities. Well, who are these radicals? Well, many people say, don't worry about it. It's just Muslims. Well, we've already seen that they've gone after people Children who are supporting UKIP, the UK Independence Party, one of the largest political parties there. We've seen that in America, it's not the Muslims. Everybody thinks that they're going to go after someone else. No, they will come after you. Anybody that disagrees with a threat with a state, anybody that the state perceives as a threat, even if they aren't a threat, they will still come after them. Well, coming up right after the break, we're going to have a special report from Leanne McAdoo. She went to South by Southwest. And she asked people what their perception of privacy was after the Snowden uh, presentation. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with that report. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum 
potency, Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here at the Austin Convention Center during South by Southwest. Edward Snowden is the keynote speaker now. We're going to go around and find out what people think the impact surveillance has had on the tech industry. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very well. Where are you guys from? Uh, Chicago. Ch oh, Chicago. Chicago. Glad to be here in Texas. Yeah, there's sun, so that's nice. Where are you from? I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Well, welcome. Are you enjoying Austin? I am. I am. Lots Wonderful. of fun. Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Good. Where are you from? Here. From Austin. Welcome. Are you excited about Edward Snowden being the keynote speaker today? I think it's pretty cool, yeah, but I don't really want to be on camera. <laughs> you got glasses on. No one can see who you are. So are you all familiar with Edward Snowden? Yeah. Yep. How do you feel the information that he shared has affected the tech industry? Mm. Ooh, very good. Very good question. I think it's made everybody more aware and more nervous about, you know, before we were kind of pushing everything out. We didn't really care about what what it was and we would share what we're eating for breakfast now it's i would say more more nervous and more um cautious about what we're doing it's really unpredictable right now i think that's why it's so interesting because there's so many different directions in which it can go and we we struggle with it on like the government level and we struggle with it on a marketer level and we struggle with it on an everyday consumer level with all you know it, everyone putting their information out there through social media are you much more concerned and cautious now while I'm you're not doing really concerned i don't do anything sketchy on the internet so i'm not worried um, I'm, I don't know, I'm not really a private person. It seems sort of like um, kind of a wonderful thing to have access to someone who's divulging so much important information. I think you're crazy if you're not concerned about privacy online. You can interview my friend. Is that, is that like, <laughs> yeah. that's super techie, right? Yeah, this is pretty intense right he's now. Got a, he's got a Are you guys going to uh, the Edward Snowden talk right now? No, I'm, I'm not, actually. I'm going to a, a film. Are you familiar with some of the things that are being leaked by Edward Snowden about how much it's affecting society? I'm not. What? I don't know what the Snowden leaks are. Is that something akin what? to the WikiLeaks? What am I supposed to say to that? Oh my goodness. You are not aware. You are building a mobile app and you do not know how this is going to... How are you going to protect your, your people that are going to download your app? Well, I just have to say thank you for keeping me informed. I'll probably have to do some more research and look into it. Yes. Do you think people should have a right to privacy on the Internet or we should have Internet rights? Uh, the Internet is, uh, you can live your life without it. So, buyer beware, right? Mm. Um, if you want to use that kind of technology, it, it comes with that kind of a catch. And that's, that's probably okay. So you're, you're, you don't mind that you're being watched like when you do yoga via the Xbox and stuff like that or like your webcam photos are going to somebody at the NSA? Yeah, I guess that is kind of sketchy. Um, I think it's really scary and I think it's something um, that's really real that we kind of all need to think about in everyday lives and we're so willing to offer up all of the information. I actually am a marketer by trade so I understand how 
um, how much we rely on that sort of information. So it's, I think it's a really delicate balance. Um, the fact that the government is surveilling um, and that they are going to be monitoring electronic transmissions, I mean, you know, that's something that we should be aware of or we're, or we're naive. Did you guys catch Edward Snowden at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't want to be on though. All right. How do you feel about the way that WikiLeaks gets whistleblowers' information out there versus how uh, Snowden's information is being given to the public? What is how I feel about the difference between how WikiLeaks did and how he did? Yeah, all at once versus slow drips every couple of months. It seems a little more responsible to do it the way Snowden's doing it. I think if you're going to give it out, give it out. It's going to take I mean, look how long it took to go through the WikiLeaks, right? I think we're still going through the WikiLeaks stuff, right? Yeah. So um, someone who actually used to work for Homeland Security, I did a long time ago, uh, information, if you just throw it out there, then let people decipher to bite what they want and kind of do it properly instead of filtering it through, giving time to people to change the message, so to speak. As a, you know, sort of a population, we have a really short attention span and a fairly short memory for even major events. I was talking to someone who um, worked on the legal team um, when uh, the Enron affair was happening and really like things like that just disappear from the radar. People forget really sort of pivotal, important things. So the more persistence and, and sort of incremental growth of information um, he can provide, the better, I think. I think it's just the beginning. I think it was just the uh, the opening of, of things that are to come. As long as Americans continue to use tools that are developed by advertisers, then we can't expect to have privacy, right? So Google Chrome is the number one browser. Google's an advertising company. Do you think we're all just kind of being conditioned to just be okay with it and accept it? Uh, no, I mean, you have an option to either use it or not use it. And you use it, you're... It's you're putting yourself up at risk. So. Well, what about all the people walking around with the Google glasses on? I think those are silly. <laughs> yeah. So. Can't opt out of that. No, you can't. Or just run away, I guess. I feel like maybe people are a little bit desensitized now. Like, it seems that people should be outraged, but they're kind of like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Um, um, it's a unfortunately evolution of this technology that we don't have control. We did not know where it was going to go. Everyone's filming you everywhere. <laughs> You can't opt out anymore. Well, it seems like this is just the beginning of what we've heard from Snowden. A lot of people agree with the way that it's being slowly leaked out. It keeps it in the news, but it's also a little bit more responsible in the name of national security, so people sort of understand that. But it also seems like a lot of people are really desensitized. Five years ago, if you told them that they were being spied on through their webcam or via their telephone, they, they would call you cr crazy conspiracy theorists. And now that it's out and it's a fact, people are just kind of desensitized to it. So. It remains to be seen what else we're going to find out, but it also remains to be seen how we're going to be able to react to this advanced technology and just the pace of technology. Well, that's it for our news tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.